Welcome to the Becoming Superhuman Podcast, where we interview extraordinary people to bring you the skills and strategies to overcome the impossible. And now, here's your host, Jonathan Levy. This episode is brought to you by Health IQ, an insurance company that helps health conscious people like runners, cyclists, weightlifters, and even vegetarians get lower rates on their life insurance. You know how you get a lower rate if you're a good driver on your car insurance? Well, why have you never been able to get a lower rate on your life insurance for living a health conscious lifestyle? Well, it turns out that now you can, and that's because of Health IQ and the way that they use science and data to secure lower rates for health conscious customers. Customers absolutely love them. In fact, they are rated a 9.6 out of 10 on Trustpilot. So I recommend you guys see if you qualify and you can go ahead and get your free quote today at healthiq.com slash superhuman or just mention the promo code superhuman when you talk to a Health IQ agent. This episode is brought to you by Organifi. You guys, one of the only things that every nutritional expert that we've had on the show seems to actually agree on is that we all need to eat more vegetables, eat more greens, eat organic, cut out all the processed junk. Well, who has the time, right? Who has the time to go out, do the shopping, make the salads, make the juices, make the smoothies? And that's what I love so much about Organifi. Their product is an all organic green juice. It has all of the nutrients that you need. It tastes absolutely amazing. And it's made by wonderful people who I consider to be personal friends. And as listeners of this show, you guys can actually save 20% on your first order. And all you have to do is go to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com and use the coupon code superhuman at checkout. Greetings, super friends, and welcome to this week's episode. You guys, this week's episode is brought to you thanks to a review from T2MFK from Canada who says, phenomenal, five stars. I always look forward to see what's new on this podcast. Always inspiring, informative, and motivating. Well, thank you, T2MFK, for that amazing review. We really appreciate it. And for those of you who have not left a review, please do so, so we can keep putting out the show every single week. Today, guys, we are joined by Tal Gur. He's a blogger, entrepreneur, serial author, and best-selling author, and a devoted adventurer who has spent the last decade pursuing 100 major goals across the globe and writing about it and philosophizing on how we can live fully. His book is called The Art of Living Fully, And it talks about his journey, including its challenges, crippling self-doubt and struggling for a sense of purpose. But Tal has discovered a life-changing gift that he is now passing on to others. We talk about how to get fulfillment in life. We talk about some of the skills, strategies, and tips that will help you find fulfillment and happiness and much, much more. It's a short episode, but I think it's definitely going to uplift your week. So without any Further ado, let me present to you, Mr. Tal Gur. Tal, welcome to the show, my friend. Happy to have you. Hi, hi, Jonathan. So Tal, tell me, I tried to cover your bio a little bit in the intro of the show, but I'm sure people are wondering, tell me a little bit about yourself and your journey, who you are and what you do. Well, well, this is a big question. But basically, we are, the journey that I want to really talk about is my 100 life goals journey, which I started around 10 years ago. I was living in Australia, just finished my master's degree. Originally, I was born in Israel. I moved to Australia to, to finish my master's degree. I was 30 years old, and I kind of asked myself, what's next? What's next in life? And I had a conversation with two friends of mine, also ex-Israelis. And we decided to kind of talk about bucket list, new life goals list, and those kind of things. And one of my friends actually decided not to participate in this whole bucket list game because he said his dad died when he was 40 years old. And he said that he's going to live his life like he only has 10 years to live. And when he said that, something hit me. I asked myself, how would I live if my life if I had only 10 years to live? And it kind of filled me with... 
passion and urgency. And I knew that I wouldn't kind of delay my dreams. I wouldn't wait until like, you know, retirement and those, those kind of things. And that's basically how my, my story really started. If you want to delve into that, I'm happy to, to start. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to. So what happened next? So the first year, nothing. I actually totally forgot about my list. I actually made a list of 100 life goals. And yeah, completely forgot about it. But then the year after that, I kind of remembered my list. And it came from a pain that I had in Australia. I felt like I felt that I was disconnected from the country. And so I kind of looked into, I looked at my list and that kind of triggered a lot of excitement. And yeah, I started my journey. So basically every year I changed an area of focus. So the first year was the year of socializing. The second year was the year of fitness, then the year of freedom. And every year I kind of set one big life goal. And so, for example, the year of fitness was an Ironman triathlon. Then the, the year of freedom was financial freedom. And yeah, life uh, was fun <laughs> from that point, really. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about the goals, because obviously you said you had 100 goals. And you, I, as far as I know, you're not 130 years old. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, the, every year there was one big goal. And the other goals were like more of a milestone toward those goals. For example, the year of freedom so the big goal was financial freedom, but there were kind of milestone goals like clearing my debt, creating location independent income, and so forth, like uh, create a passive income up to $1,000. So, you know, there was a little bit of logic with the way I kind of designed my list. Also, I have to say that I did allow some flexibility. So it wasn't that like 10 years ago, I, you know, I, I created a list and I covered every goal that I set. I allowed myself to change the goals along the way. But one thing always was fixed. It was always 10 categories. And every year there was one different category. So I always switched between areas of lives. If I removed the goal, I always like edit something else. That's really interesting. I think what what's interesting for me is I always talk about life balance and how, you know, creating a more balanced life is generally more likely to make people happy than excelling in one area. So I'm interested how you balance if, you know, the whole theme of your year is fitness, how do you balance and also retain things from the previous year, be it social or financial independence or whatever it might be so that you're not hyper-focused on just one thing? Well, first of all, I really believe in balance. Health is balance, in my opinion. But here's the thing. If you don't necessarily focus on something, it doesn't have to be an area of life, you may not be able to extract as much wisdom from that area. So I really believe going to some kind of extreme in one area just to extract more wisdom. For example, if you, again, let's say financial freedom, you may want to spend more energy and resources, time, money, whatever, to actually achieve that goal. And so the way I kind of maintain balance was to still have kind of still maintaining other areas, but not necessarily as much as, let's say, the area of, of financial freedom or finance, basically. So basically every year I kind of said, all right, this is the focus and everything else I'm actually going to maintain balance, but on kind of low maintenance, if that makes sense. Okay, interesting. So tell me a little bit more about what you're doing today, because obviously you mentioned financial freedom was a part of your journeys. And uh, I imagine that traveling the world in and of itself and accomplishing your goals didn't get you there. So how do you fill up your time and, and what are you devoting your life to now? Well, so again, every year I basically kind of decide what I'm going to do for the next year in terms of focus. And so this year was the year of sharing, I called it. And basically it was about uh, sharing my story, really. Hence, you know, our conversation right now, I published a book about my story. Here's the thing. When I started the journey, I never thought I'm actually going to write a book about it. I never thought I'm actually going to even start a blog about it. But, you know, as I went through my journey, a lot of people asked me questions about it and asked me, hey, how come you're doing whatever, detox? How come you, you're here? How come you're doing yoga in Bali? All those kind of questions. And it kind of made sense at some point to kind of go on a journey of, of sharing it just because of the interest and, and also it felt like part of my fulfillment as well. So I'm gonna ask you a tough question on fulfillment. How happy would you say you are today? Because on, on some level, I think the key to happiness is seeking, but also the key to happiness is being happy with where you are. So you find yourself in an interesting position where you could be very happy in the journey that you're seeking or you could be very miserable. 
Yeah, well, it's funny because someone just asked me this question just uh, the other day, and I actually said 10 out of 10. She looked at me and said, is it possible? 10 out of 10? Don't you even leave yourself? Usually you leave yourself like, you know, let's say you say nine or eight, just so you can actually get somewhere. But, you know, I basically disconnected happiness and pursuit. So I, I disconnected the whole goal achievement and everything that I'm doing from happiness. For me, like happiness is the base. It's like it's the... Um, uh, what's the word source or something like, you know, I don't necessarily need to do something or get to something to be happy. And actually, I like the word contentment a little bit more than happiness. So even when I'm, let's say, a little bit like, let's say, frustrated, whatever, I'm still content with my life. And this contentment is not related to anything outside. It's not dependent, you know, so I really believe in unconditional contentment. If again, if it makes sense. It makes absolute sense. And I definitely uh, resonate with kind of everything that you said. And, and I find that that's the way that I most easily go about my life in the universe. I may add one thing here. So I actually wrote an article about it called Happiness First. So a lot of time we pursue goals for happiness versus from happiness. So for example, when I have a girlfriend, I'll be happy. When I move an apartment, I'll be happy versus I'm happy and I decided to, you know, whatever, get whatever I want. Even like losing weight. I'm happy and I want to lose weight. I don't necessarily need the motivation of unhappiness because usually we're unhappy to motivate ourselves. So if we disconnect this way of motivation, we'll enjoy the journey of setting goals because otherwise it could be a miserable journey. Like because every time you achieve something, there's always, oh, okay, what's next? And it's just like kind of a loop. So, yeah, it took me a while to understand it. But at some point on my journey, I realized, all right, that's the way to pursue from happiness. Yeah, I realized exactly the same thing because I always struggled with this idea of acceptance and gratitude. Like, how can you be grateful and at the same time try to pursue and try to have more, be more, do more? And that was the exact conclusion that I came to is, is it coming from a place of gratitude and contentment or is it coming from a place of once I do this, then... And I have to say, you know, I get a lot of students who reach out to me with a lot of really difficult, painful stories about suicide or drug abuse. And a lot of, if not most of them, make the decision to be happy and then are able to change their lives as opposed to changing their lives from this place of sorrow. Yeah. Well, sometimes, you know, it's tough to kind of, you said, decide to be happy. Like, how do you even do that? Like, you know, and it's really hard to kind of combine all of that, like logic and flow and all those concepts. I really believe in the idea of gratitude. And when I say gratitude, you know, a lot of time we kind of, we're grateful for, let's say, external things like whatever, I have a home, I have a loving family, but I even go like deeper, even the fact that, you know, I can see or I have a, you know, like basic stuff that usually we don't even pay attention to them. We usually pay attention to our head when we have a headache. We pay attention to our teeth when we have you know, when we have pain in our teeth, it's interesting. And so kind of like the idea of, let's say, meditation in the morning where you pay attention to a little bit more to stuff you we already have, that's for me like a must. I meditate every day and that's what I do in the morning. I think that's interesting. And as you were talking, I was also realizing, I think that's one of the huge benefits as well of volunteer work, which is, you know, we all take for granted that we have a family until you volunteer to work with children who don't have a family or, you know, we all take for granted our health until you volunteer and you talk to people who don't have their health. And it's that I call it a hefty dose of perspective because it really, it retunes you to realize the basic, basic things that we take so for granted. Yeah. I say actually, when you talk, I have goosebumps because yesterday I actually volunteered with uh, elderly people. And to be honest, they weren't really nice to me, even though I was volunteering. But just being there and realizing, wow, I'm still young, you know, like, it's just sometimes like you look at someone, you see someone and it's kind of mirroring something to you. And I immediately kind of got out of myself and my problems and my needs and me, 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 and start to kind of like more like focus on the other person. And wow, maybe you have only like a few years to live. Like, how can I actually like, again, get outside of myself and help this person? I immediately got into to happiness immediately. Incredible. Tell you mentioned meditation. I want to ask you, what are some other superhuman hacks or habits that you've picked up along the way that help you perform at a higher level? Well, to be honest, like, you know, I start my day like by doing a lot of 
different habits. Like, for example, I drink lemon in the morning. I drink a lot of water in, in the morning, like at least one liter. I don't start my day before, as I said, meditation, but also read a little bit of person development. I just basically align myself. I align myself with what I believe is my purpose. I align myself with, you know, even just like feeling what is needed right now in the moment. So one thing, for example, that I do, I don't know how many people read the book, The One Thing. I ask myself, what's the one thing that I need to do today? And that's it. That's my focus. I don't necessarily do anything else before I can complete this mission. And then like, you know, it allows me to, again, be more aligned. I feel like sometimes we're just automatic. We don't really remind ourselves like who we are, what we're here to do, you know, the whole idea of happiness first. So just again, the reminding ourselves, I think it's such a key component. That would be the key habit, reminding, because we, we tend to, I forget every day, every day I forget my purpose, every day I forget that happiness first. You know, I'm not superhuman in that sense, but maybe the superhuman skills is that I remind myself each time. I think that's a really, really important one. And and I tend to realize that when I'm stressed or unhappy, kind of in the rare instances, it's, it's because I'm operating in that autopilot mode. It's also, I think, has something to do with being reactive versus proactive, which is so many people spend their day just reacting. An email comes in, a phone call comes in, a conversation comes up you know, and they're operating from a place of reactivity as opposed to that deliberate opportunity to act deliberately from exactly where you want to on exactly the things that you want to. It's night and day for me. Yes, yes. And I think also that, you know, we can be grateful also for our reactivity in some ways, because every time we're reactive, it's an opportunity to explore the belief behind the reaction. Because, you know, there's, a, there's an automatic response in our body that basically, you know, something happened and there's a belief and then we react to it. So I nowadays, every time I react, I see it as an opportunity, as a gift in many ways. That's really interesting. Just as a point on the idea of cognitive reframing, right? And and this idea that really life is exactly what you make it out to be. And if you believe that something is positive, it is positive. And seeing something that most would perceive as negative as a positive is one of those skills that's really taken me very far in life. Yes, yes. I have a really cool question that I ask myself every time I get into a crisis mode. It's like, what's so great about it? It's actually like I'm saying great, like even like something like cancer, right? What's so great about cancer? And then immediately, as you said, reframe the whole journey. Yeah, I think it's a key question in my life. Absolutely. So I want to ask you, Tal, to give our readers, well, actually, first, why don't I ask you this? What's next, right? So what's your goal for this year and what are you focusing on and and where are you hoping to take your journey? Well, to be honest, I haven't set a goal for 2018 yet. Uh, I usually leave myself like a week just before the end of the year to do a reflection process. I do have some clues, but you know, I'm not going to set another list of 100 life goals. I really want to go deeper with my purpose in so many ways. So the goal for this year was to publish a bestseller, a book, which I did. Next year, yeah, it, it can go different ways, but I'll probably decide like by the end of the year. Yeah. I'm in the same position. Tell me a little bit about the book. Well, the book uh, was published uh, a month ago. It has been a bestseller since its launch. Like, yeah, received very well. Uh, a lot of reviews, like more than 100 reviews. What can I tell you about the book? It took me a year to write it. It's mostly stories for my journey, plus lessons. Basically, there's 10 chapters. Every chapter is a year in my in my journey. And then there's like lessons in every chapter as well. So it's like story, lesson, story, lesson, story, lesson. Yeah, the lessons are great. The stories are great. I put a lot of energy into it. Yeah, I'm very proud. What kinds of lessons? What kind of stories? I mean, who should read this book is a better way to ask the question. Well, the book is called The Art of Fully Living. So anyone who's interested in the idea of fully living and living to the fullest, basically, anyone who loves person development, anyone who loves, you know, the idea of freedom. Yeah. So also it's a kind of a memoir as well. So if you love biographies and just because the story, it's not just successes. Yeah, I have like big failures and I I actually mentioned them in my story. Some of the lessons, you know, I just we just talked about it. Happiness first. Mm-hmm. There's other lessons about total immersion, like you know, the idea of if you really want to achieve something big, you may want to immerse yourself in the area and so forth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Perfect. So Tal, before we wrap up, I want to ask you to give our audience a little bit of homework that can help them live a fuller life. Whether it takes a week or a month or a year, I would love to hear kind of an assignment that people can take with them from this episode and begin applying. Homework. Well, <laughs> right. But let's, call it, let's call it fun work, all right? Let's call it fun work. I mean, first of all, I want to kind of, again, do another reframe. The reframe would be like that. Usually we get into the whole idea of fully living or realize we need, like, let's say a change or living to the fullest when we have a crisis. So the first thing I would say is like, kind of see every crisis as an opportunity. Every crisis can be a calling to something. So not look at it from a place of like, oh, I need to fix or oh, something, you know, something bad happened, whatever. Not at all. Maybe like, you know, there's a calling here to go into fulfillment. So that would be the first thing, just being more, I would say, reflective and more, you know, just look at it from a different angle, really. So in terms of homework, I, I would just basically say like, it's New Year's Eve, it's coming soon. Like, you know, I don't know when you're going to publish it, but it's a really good time for reflection and actually setting goal for the year. I would say like, look at a year and just basically, actually, I've got a really good exercise. It's actually not mine. It comes from the book, The One Thing, if you read it. And basically, he's doing it like that. He said, what's the one thing for you to achieve in your life? Or what, what's the one thing for you in, in life? And then he goes like back in time. And then it says, what's the one thing in the next 10 years? What's the next one thing in the next year? What's the one thing next month? It's really good to look at it from that way because you realize that like you go back in time until it's so what's the one thing for today? And you basically link it to your one thing in life. It's really beautiful to do that because it, it's great prioritization, basically exercise. I really love this concept. Also the idea of 80-20, the 80-20 rule, basically that not all our decisions are equal some decision would be better than others. And so, yeah, I would recommend this, this exercise, doing the one thing and actually reading that book. I love it. But I also want to ask you the opposite question, which is I'm perusing through your list of goals now. And I just think it's wonderful how diverse they are. And there's so much creativity that's gone into creating these goals. So I want to ask if you have any tips, you know, as people create their goals, like you said, it's, you know, January, how did you come up with this list and how can people create worthwhile goals that add to their life? Is there a process that you went through to generate this list? Yes. Yeah, so the process, I mean, there's a bit of flexibility as well. Yeah, it's not wasn't that fixed. First of all, I divided my life to 10 main categories. And then basically I said for every area, I want one big goal that for me, it would mean like fully living. So whatever, like financial freedom, as I said, or like in fitness, it was Ironman triathlon. And then basically I kind of went backward and I said, all right, what would be some kind of milestone goals or, you know, that will allow me to actually get to that? Like with the Ironman Triathlon was maybe to, you know, run a marathon and so forth. Then I just like went into free flow and whatever came to my mind, like, you know, some fun goals. Like, so I just filled the categories and suddenly I have like a kind of almost like a life plan. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's cool. It's a story really. But the most important thing with creating a list like that is that it allows you to explore yourself in a higher level. Because how do you know who you are if you don't really experiment in different areas? So this is what I, I believe, it, you know, the real value of creating a bucket list or it allows you to explore who you are, like kind of really go on a deeper journey. So the 100 Life Goal 10 journey, it's a cool story or a name or a title for it. But what really happened is you go in a journey of exploration. Very cool. And I also noticed uh, you have exactly what I was hoping you would on your website, which is a list of 3000 bucket list ideas that people can actually choose from. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there's also a tester like on my site where you can actually answer, I think there's 100 questions really or 50 questions where it shows you in a graph like what areas, you know, you may want to strengthen, what areas of life, because it's one of the biggest decisions you may want to do is like choosing an area of focus. Would it be fitness? Would it be financial freedom? Would it be like whatever, creativity? Mm -hmm. So sometimes I go for the area that has the biggest leverage or the biggest opportunity. Because another thing that I want to say is one thing I realized when I look back in, into my journeys is that everything was connected. Like the fitness was connected to financial freedom. Like with good habits, I was able to kind of translated into the era of finance and so forth. So 
it's beautiful to see the connection. But as Steve Jobs said, like you can't connect the dots forward. They can only connect the dots backwards. Mm-hmm. So you have some kind of intuition or just kind of ask yourself, where is the biggest leverage? Where is the biggest opportunity? I like that. I often do this wheel of life exercise with people where it's eight categories, not 10, but I have them sketch out and then encourage them to try and fill in the gaps if you have a kind of Pac-Man situation. Because I think we have a tendency to create goals around the things that come easily for us. For me, it's so easy to create more goals to grow my business or grow my following. The things that come harder to me, you know, like making time for romance in my life, for example, you tend to neglect Yes, yes. I mean, I have to say, like, in this, I would really, like, uh, say, like, intuition is key here. Like, you know, because you may, like, make, like, you know, the perfect list or whatever, but something inside of you tells you, like, all right, this is the journey that I want to do. It doesn't make sense, but this is the journey I want to do. I mean, I remember when I went into Ironman Triathlon, it was like, why do I do that? But it was so inspiring for me. I was so inspired. I said, like, oh, I have to do it. You know, if I live once, I mean, I have to do this thing. So it didn't make sense, but I went for it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Were there any goals that you did where you're like, yeah, no, never again? Like, just not my scene and you learned something about yourself where it was kind of a, yeah, okay, not not for me. <laughs> yes. So I went, I did the, the Vipassana, um, Vipassana meditation. It's a 10-day meditation. And I actually quit the first time I did it and I said, Wow, this is crazy. Never again, never again. But the funny thing is like, I went back and did it again, like I think six years later. And while doing the Vipassana, it's really hard. Like for 10 days, you meditate 10 hours a day or even more. And you, you're not allowed to speak with anyone. I remember saying to myself, why am I doing it? I don't want to do it. Like I, this is the last time I'm doing it. The last time I'm doing it. And guess what happened? Like once I finished it, I said, mm, maybe I'll do it again. <laughs> <laughs> funny how that works, hey? Yeah. So Tal, I want to give you an opportunity to let people know where they can reach out and learn more about everything that you're doing. Well, I think the book is a good intro for what I'm doing. And so I highly recommend like just Google like uh, the name of the book, the title, The Art of Fully Living or my name, Tal Gore. Yeah, fullylive.com is my website slash blog. And yeah, anyone who's interested can subscribe. Good stuff. Perfect. Tal, I want to ask you the last question we always ask before we finish the podcast, which is if someone takes away one big lesson and they remember it for the rest of their lives, what would you hope for that one lesson to be? Disconnect happiness from the whole pursuit. Just I love it. Operate from happiness. Yeah. Brilliant note to end on. Tal, thank you so much for spending your time with me today and sharing your wisdom. I enjoyed it. I know our audience did as well. Thank you, Jonathan, for inviting me. I appreciate it. All right, that is all that we have for you guys today. I want to give a very special thank you to this episode's sponsor, Health IQ, the health insurance company that helps health conscious people save on their life insurance using science and data to assess the fact that health conscious people have lower risk and therefore should get lower rates. Remember guys, to see if you qualify, go ahead and get your free quote today at healthiq.com slash superhuman or mention the promo code superhuman when you talk to a Health IQ agent. I also want to remind you guys that if you were inspired by this episode, if you've been inspired by the idea of learning faster and remembering more and accelerating your capacity to learn, then I strongly encourage you guys to join me for a completely free one-hour training seminar where we will go into speed reading and memory techniques that will allow you to do all of the above. To check that out, simply visit jle.vi slash webinar. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in to the Becoming Superhuman podcast. For more great skills and strategies or for links to any of the resources mentioned in this episode, visit www.becomingasuperhuman.com slash podcast. We'll see you next time.